Welcome back to the Youth Bible in One Year, day 184. Did you know that God has a plan for you and he has a purpose for you that is good, pleasing and perfect? So even if you're going through a setback or a disappointment, we can remember that God's purposes are perfect. So what do we do with this knowledge that God's purposes for you are so, so good? How do we live our lives better and more like Jesus when we know this fact? Well, let's find out today. I trained as a lawyer and worked as a barrister. Then back in 1981, Pippa and I felt that God was calling us to full-time ministry in the Church of England and for me to become an ordained minister. We also felt that we should do our training in Durham, starting in September 1982. I was at the top of the waiting list for the Theological College at Durham University. I was told it was almost certain someone would drop out and I was virtually guaranteed a place. Based on this, I announced our plans widely, including telling all my colleagues at work that I was leaving. Just before I was due to start, we received news that, exceptionally, no one had dropped out that year and it would not be possible for us to go. We tried everything to persuade them to change their minds. We desperately tried to find another theological college that would accept us. We prayed and pushed as hard as we could, but to no avail. The door was firmly shut. The following year was extremely difficult. I was given very little work by my workplace as people knew that I was leaving and they had no incentive to build my career. It was a huge disappointment and mystifying at the time. In the end, Pippa and I went to Oxford to study the following year and I eventually started as an assistant pastor at HCB in 1986. With hindsight, had we got the place at Durham, the timing would have meant that a job at HCB would have been out of the question and we would not be doing what we're doing today. I'm so thankful to God that he blocked our plans and strategically ordered our steps. If you're going through a setback or disappointment, remember that his purposes for you are good, pleasing and perfect. Nothing happens without God's permission. God is in control and in everything he is working for good. From Proverbs 16 In your heart you may plan your course, but the Lord determines your steps. God orders your steps through human plans. It is right to plan. However, we need to do it with the necessary humility, recognizing that our plans will only succeed if it is the Lord's will. The writer of Proverbs says, In your heart you may plan your course, but the Lord determines your steps. Sometimes we align our plans with God's purposes. At other times, certainly in my experience, God overrules our plans. We should always bear in mind that we may have got it wrong and that ultimately, thankfully, it is the Lord who determines our steps. God often works out his purposes through good leadership. Good leaders motivate others. They do not base their decisions simply on what is popular. Sound leadership has a moral foundation. They cultivate an environment of transparency. Good leaders cultivate honest speech. They love advisors who tell them the truth. They invigorate lives. They are like spring, rain and sunshine. Thank you, Lord, that although I make plans in my heart, ultimately you determine my steps. New Testament from Acts 22 and 23 The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Rid the earth of him! He's not fit to live! The commander directed that he be flogged and interrogated in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do? he asked. This man is a Roman citizen. Those who were about to interrogate him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. The commander wanted to find out exactly why Paul was being accused by the Jews. So the next day he released him and ordered the chief priests and all the members of the Sanhedrin to assemble. Then he brought Paul and set him before them. 
Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin and said, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. Then Paul, knowing that some of them were Sadducees and the others Pharisees, called out in the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, descended from Pharisees. I stand on trial because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, and that there are neither angels nor spirits, but the Pharisees believe all these things. The following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. God orders your steps in spite of human opposition. Are you worried about your future? Are you facing difficulties and opposition or in a time of crisis? Are there plans against you? There are a number of competing plans in this story. How do these interact with God's purposes? First, the crowd. The crowd plan to rid the earth of Paul. While it causes Paul hardship, ultimately it fails because their plans are against God's purpose. Second, the commander. The commander, a man of military power, plans to have Paul flogged. Paul is taken to the torture chamber, but the plan fails because it's illegal to flog a Roman citizen before being convicted, and the commander had not realized that Paul was a Roman citizen. Third, the court, the religious authorities, the Sanhedrin, plan to kill Paul. Paul is taken to court and placed in the dock. He points out his innocence. Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. Paul's response is, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Then Paul manages to divide the tribunal, which consisted of Pharisees, who believe in the resurrection of the dead, and Sadducees, who did not. Paul decides to exploit their antagonism. Paul says, in effect, look, the reason I am on trial is that I am a Pharisee and believe in the resurrection of the dead. Fourth, the crises. In the midst of all this, Paul seeks to align his plans with God's plans. He was guided by God. He resolved in the Spirit to go to Jerusalem and then to Rome. However, in spite of this, he hit crisis after crisis. Paul must have wondered whether he had missed out on God's purposes. But in the middle of this crisis, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage. As you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. As with Paul, God will strategically order your steps. The sovereignty of God means that we don't have to worry about the ultimate outcome. God is in complete control, even though it may not always be easy to see it at the time. God's purpose is that you, like Paul, should be a witness. Everywhere you go, be a witness. When appropriate, give your testimony. Even when you're not speaking, your life is a testimony. Don't wait until all is going well. In fact, in times of difficulties, sometimes your testimony is at its most powerful. Lord, give me the same courage you gave to the Apostle Paul to testify about you wherever I go. Old Testament from 2 Kings 6-8 to There was a great famine in the city. As the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him, Help me, my lord the king. The king replied, If the Lord does not help you, where can I get help for you? The king said, This disaster is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Elisha replied, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a sayer of the finest flour will sell for a shekel, and two sayers of barley for a shekel, at the gate of Samaria. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open up the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, answered Elisha. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, Why stay here until we die? Let's go over to the camp of the Aramaeans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. At dusk they got up and went to the camp of the Aramaeans. When they had reached the edge of the camp, No one was there, for the Lord had caused the Aramaeans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army, so that they said to one another, Look, 
the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us. So they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents and ate and drank. Then they took silver, gold and clothes and went off and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, What we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news, and we're keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. Then the people went out and plundered the camp of the Aramaeans. So a seer of the finest flour sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley sold for a shekel, as the Lord had said. It happened as the man of God had said to the king. God orders your steps through human agents. God often works out his purposes through human agency. The suffering of the people of Samaria was almost unbearable. Famine, high inflation, food prices soaring astronomically, and even cannibalism resulting. The king of Israel made a pathetic excuse for not helping the woman who cried to him, Help me! My lord, the king, he replied, if the lord does not help you, where can I get help for you? This is the wrong reaction. The sovereignty of God and his plans is not meant to be an excuse for human inaction. God works through human agents. When you see needs, you are called to be God's hands, responding to those needs. This is what Elisha did. God used Elisha. He prophesied. Listen, God's word, the famine's over. This time tomorrow, food will be plentiful. God used four men with leprosy who discovered where this plentiful food was. As they ate and drank, they said to each other, we're not doing right, for this is a day of good news and we're keeping it to ourselves. Food prices dropped overnight. Every word Elisha had spoken proved true. The world produces enough food for everyone, yet one in eight people on this planet are living with the pain of hunger. If we simply feed ourselves, we're not doing right. We must do everything we can to bring an end to extreme poverty in our generation. This is also a wonderful illustration of our motive for telling others the good news about Jesus. These starving people came across a mountain of food. They realized that God had delivered them from their enemies. They could have kept the good news to themselves, but that would have been utterly selfish. Yet they were tempted to do so. We have far better news than they had, the good news of Jesus and the gospel. Do not keep it to yourself. You are the human agent responsible for carrying out God's plans. Similarly, the people in the city could have just stayed there, in their lost condition, refusing to believe the good news. Indeed, at first the king does not respond very positively. He suspects a trap. Likewise today, some people do not respond to the offer of life Jesus makes to every human being because they suspect there is some trap. Not only does God work out his purposes through human agents, he sometimes reveals these plans to his prophets. Elisha prophesied, at a time of famine, that within 24 hours, food would be in ample supply. It seemed totally unbelievable at the time, but God rescued his people. Elisha's prophecy came true. As the Lord had said, God also revealed to Elisha what was about to happen to the king. Lord, thank you that you have good plans for my life and your purposes will ultimately prevail. Help us to be a blessing to the world, feeding the hungry and bringing the good news of Jesus to a world that desperately needs physical and spiritual food. Pepper adds, In 2 Kings chapters 6 and 7, we see how God uses the most despised people, in this case four men with leprosy, to discover the abandoned Aramean camp and to bring the good news of Israel's liberation. 
What fun they must have had stuffing their starving bodies with delicious food and covering their disfigured bodies with beautiful clothes. In God's kingdom, the last shall be first. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you have a plan for me. Help me to trust in this plan. Help me to do your will in this life. Help me to trust in you always. In your holy name, amen.